Have you ever wondered if you could stop overthinking, stop procrastinating, and just act? That's what we'll talk about today. I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made, this diminishes fear. Knowing what must be done does away with fear. Rosa Parks. Today we're going to talk about the book and the TED Talk on The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Transform your life, work, and confidence with everyday courage. I am late to the Mel Robbins phenomenon. She came out with this video and I heard a lot about it. I heard all the people I listen to on podcasts myself talk about it. And it's one of those things that I knew I would love it as soon as I heard about it. But I never ended up seeing it until just recently. And of course, when I did see her video, I did love it. And then I read her book, and that's what I'm going to talk about today, is what is her advice for this action? First of all, I'll say that the video is fantastic and gives you a lot of advice that you can start using right away without reading the book or doing a deep dive into it. In fact, the deep dive in her book is really there to help reinforce her ideas, but the entire idea is in her video and really makes a strong punch into getting you to act. The video is officially called How to Stop Screwing Yourself Over. And the links, of course, are in my show notes. And she asks us, what do we really want? What is it we're trying to get? And I know a lot of times that becomes the hard question. And when you want to exactly do the thing that you're trying to do, that's when you need to act. And all this infrastructure we put in our lives really hurts our ability to get those things done. She begs us to stop overanalyzing. Stop putting it off. If you want love, if you want to lose weight, if you want a better job, act. Do it. And her plan will help you get there. She believes, like I believe, that we live in this amazing time that there are all these resources out there on the internet. There's all these contacts we could do. If we'll never meet Mel Robbins in real life, we can still use her as a mentor because we know so much about what her thoughts are. We are at this peak time. We're getting our dreams in a lot of ways has never been easier. I was telling a friend that back when we were kids, we all had tape recorders. And if you asked me when I started podcasting, I would tell you it was probably when I was about eight years old because I had a tape recorder, I had a microphone, And my friend, too, hundreds of miles away, we didn't even know each other, did the same thing. We had our own fake radio shows. But, of course, we couldn't get a theme song. We couldn't get it out there. No one would ever listen to it. But on tapes and places that no one can ever access. Now you have this ability to get people to do art for you, to get people to do music for you, for people to edit your book or look over your resume or coach you into your next career. We live in an amazing time. And so now our time is to act. She says the F word, fine, is terrible. How are you? I'm fine. It means that you're not getting what you want. You're not living your dreams. You're missing out on the opportunities you have in your life. Fine is devastating. It's not where we're supposed to be. She says it makes her angry when people say, fine. The worst part about it, she says, is that it's a lie we tell ourselves. I'm fine. Well, if I don't get that new thing I wanted to do, if I don't take a vacation this year, if I don't work on my next podcast, it's it's fine. And she says that's infuriating because now we're lying to ourselves, which is a million times worse than just telling your coworker when you stop in at the office. How are you? I'm fine. She said that our odds of being born is like one in 400 trillion, that all these events came together to make us and that we are unique human beings. We are on this planet to do something amazing. We have a billion opportunities, a billion decisions to make, different ways we can act. And what do we do? We go to bed. We sleep in. We never act on those things. And we do that because we just never feel like it. Oh, I would like to exercise, but I just don't feel like it right now. I'd like to start my next podcast, but I kind of wanted to just sit here and watch TV tonight. Those things are terrible. And she said that we need to stop doing that. 
We need to get up 30 minutes earlier and exercise or start the day earlier so that we can get our goals now. We can start working on them right away. And it's that activation energy that gets us out of bed, forces us to do those things. I know that it's hard for me, as I mentioned before, I'm not a morning person, but there never seems to fail that whenever daylight savings time rolls around, I have an East Coast customer and I have to fly out to New York or go somewhere on the East Coast. So now I have to be on an airplane at five o'clock. It's hard for me to do, to get up and do those things, to get up and be that early. And you know what I do? I just do it. I get up because I know that if I don't, I'm going to miss my flight. I open the curtains because light is one of the best ways we can make ourselves awake. I walk around. I get something to drink. I just start acting. And I think that's what she's talking about here. We can do that when we're not on a trip, when we don't have something big planned. We can do this in our everyday lives. Just go. And she said that that's the point about being an adult. There's no one who's going to tell you what the right thing to do is. I think that becomes hard for people. I think it became hard for me because I had my grandmother who gave me good advice And then she wasn't there to give me the good advice. And suddenly you realize, oh, well, that's because I'm an adult and I'm supposed to be telling me what to do. I'm supposed to be coming up with the wise choice and the action and the encouraging and the shoving out the door. That's now my job. And I know that people kind of get stuck at that point when there's not a teacher, there's not a professor, there's not a parent to just kind of give you that push that you really needed, that kick in the rear that was going to get you to do something. Now you're the adult and this is your time. And in the end, to get what you want isn't easy. We think that when I find what my dream job is or when I find my perfect activity, it'll all become clear and the angels will sing and there will be dancing unicorns and all the things that will come together to make this happen. And that is not how this goes. Getting what we want, she says, takes force, a lot of force, forcing ourselves to get up and get out of bed, forcing ourselves to do the hard things, force, 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 day after day, doing the thing. And it is hard, but everything in us wants to become more. It wants us to get our goals. And so as we start working that way, as we start getting what we want, We start to see that progress. But she said that the problem is, is our brain, our body, all the things are telling us, stay in bed, get a little bit more sleep. Oh, yeah, and you're stressed out. Don't do this new thing. Don't try this thing. Boy, that sounds scary. We, she says, are behind enemy lines because the things in us are trying to go against us. It has a lot to do with biology because back in the days when we lived in huts, we had to conserve energy, we had to eat, and we had to reproduce, and we had to get water. But beyond that, anything we expended energy on cost us. And if we were at a time where it was sparse, it could cost us our lives. And so our whole system of being loves entropy. It doesn't want you to try something new. It doesn't want you to go into the saber-toothed tiger cave. It wants you to be safe at home, sitting in your chair, eating chicken. It just wants you to do the simple things. And so it is going to fight us. And if anyone ever heard what our brains say to us, you're going to fail. This isn't going to work out right. You're going to lose your job. You're not going to go and do this adventurous thing. They would be horrified at what's going on with us. We would never talk to our friends like we talk to ourselves. And then we never get to do the fun things. We don't dance at the party. We don't go outside. I know I sometimes have a beautiful day and I say, oh, it'd be a great day to go outside for a hike. A thing I love and I just won't do it. I'm kind of comfortable in my chair right now. So it's horrible because you have to actually get to act. Her five-second process is that impulse motion that gets you to act. And she says if you don't do it in five seconds, you will outthink yourself, your entropy will get to you, you will start to lose your enthusiasm to do whatever it is you're trying to do. And so her video, it's fantastic. I want you to watch it because it really speaks to you. It really speaks to you about where you're at. But my biggest question when I was watching her video is, What is the limiting principle on it? 
And what she really wants you to do, here's the whole plan, is to say five, four, three, two, one, go. And just do the thing. If you're at your company party and you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll get up there and dance, do it. If you're thinking about asking your boss for a raise, go do it. If you're looking to hit publish on your brand new podcast, hit publish. We heard that from James Altucher too. Just do it. It takes courage. It takes a fight. But it's the one thing that's going to get us to act. And if we don't do it at the end of the five seconds, we'll find a reason not to. And we'll find a reason to go back to bed. We'll find a reason not to send out the resume. We'll find the reason not to talk to our spouse about a problem we've been having. It'll end. And so that's why you just have to do it. The one thing that really got me is I like to prepare and I like to plan on things. If I were going to quit my job, I would have another job lined up or at least I'd have my resume, some leads in place. You know, I would have something there. And when she talks about just acting, that's stressful to me. I don't think that that's actually successful in every situation. Some things do require planning. And I think where after reading the book and listening to the podcast, this is about those places where you know what it is you're supposed to do. You know you should lose weight. You know you should exercise. You know you should go for a walk. You know you should go out there and go hiking. You should get your bike out and put in your car and go someplace exciting to go biking. When you're certain of those things that you're supposed to be doing, just do it. I think that when there are things that require some planning and you're not using the planning as a procrastination tool, then plan. Make sure that you know what you're going to do. Most of us, in fact, I'd say all of us, go beyond that. We are well out of the stage of planning, preparing, doing our due diligence so that we make sure we have a soft landing with whatever decision we're going to make. We then spend so much more time drifting on that, planning some more when we know we're ready to act. We know we're well past that and we just don't do it. That's where this five, four, three, two, one, go comes from. It's now our time to act. Just do it. Just go do the thing. If it's something simple like getting out of bed so you can exercise, do it. Do it now. Don't plan. Don't, well, I better think about all the things I'm going to do when I exercise. Do you know how many times I decided I had to develop the most perfect plan in the world before I got up and exercised? Just get on the rower. Row. Go for a walk. Do something. Quit planning. Those situations are where you need to act. She said she created this rule for herself because she was falling apart and things were going poorly in her marriage, poorly in her career. And this led her to become happy, to save her marriage, to get a better job, and to have this whole empire where she has podcasts and books going. She speaks for a living. And I have to say that she's incredibly motivating. I don't know what it is she did before, but wow, when you listen to her, it's really amazing. I do recommend taking the 20 minutes and watching the video. Her book is really good, uh, too. It has a lot of examples and a lot of examples from people who used her plan, who found ways to make her rule, her five-second rule, work for them. And so she really tries to show why it's so beneficial. I really love what she does. She talks about, like, these no-brainer rules. You know, when you act, your brain is not involved in it. It's your heart that is telling you what to do. Suddenly, your brain and all of its, ooh, I don't know, we might you know, get in trouble if we do this, or we might not be happy if we start a podcast, or if we write a book, it might be pretty terrible. It's our heart that's telling us that we should go forward in it. I think somehow if Mel Robbins and James Altucher got together, she says we have to forget motivation, all this stuff about, oh, you have to feel motivated. You have to feel what you're wanting to do. She says it's all terrible because you're never going to feel motivated. Your brain is always going to tell you to stop, think some more, take a nap, plan a little bit longer, rest on it, or maybe don't even do it at all. This sounds really dangerous. It will never get to that place. And I've heard other people say that too. Motivation comes from acting. Motivation doesn't cause acting. And she says that her rule doesn't make things easier. Some things are tough, you know, Writing a book or creating a podcast or getting a new job all takes steps. But what it's getting you to do is it's getting you to do it. She calls it a tool that it's going to get you to start moving and start acting now. 
And she says that if we don't do this five second rule, hesitation will kill everything. As soon as we hesitate, as soon as we say, well, wait a minute, I have another thought here. It's over with and you've lost the battle. It's going to kill anything that you tried to do. Even a small hesitation can damage all your goals. And that's why she thinks you just need to act. She says it's the smallest moves that make the most distance. It's the smallest moves that make everything matter more. And I believe that too. I have a whole podcast about it. Small moves. Acting now is important. She says that every time we have a new phase in our life, you know, maybe we're getting married or we're getting a new job or we're deciding to get a new job, we're going to have to become the person we're meant to be. We're going to have to take on these new tasks. And that means acting and acting now. I mean, can you imagine if you were going to have a baby and you and your husband were deciding whether to get a crib or not get this crib or paint this wall? If you decided forever, you're never going to get the crib. And at some point, you're going to have a baby with no crib. It's damaging to hesitate. She says that as soon as we start to move, as soon as we start to act, suddenly our brain, our physiology changes and we become action people. And she talks about Rosa Parks as being someone who just acted. She got on that bus. She didn't plan to get on the bus. No one told her to do the things that she was going to do. And when he told her to go to the back of the bus, her brain screamed out, no. And when it did that, she acted. She sat where she wasn't supposed to sit. And she epitomizes this rule of acting, making that critical decision. Her critical decision changed the entire world. She says, quote, there's only one you. There will never be another one. And that's your power. I love that quote. I believe it wholeheartedly. There has never been this combination of genes and brain and experiences that ever produced a person like you. And so now is your time to act. I think we do this all the time. Oh, I'm going to go make dinner. Do we endlessly prepare for, well, I don't know. I could have this for dinner and I could have that for dinner. Or if we decide we're going to get a drink, hmm, should I have coffee? Should I have tea? Should I get a can of pop? No, we get up and we get something to drink. We don't think about most of the decisions we make, particularly the ones we actually want to get done, like getting dinner or getting a drink or picking up a book or turning on the TV. Those things are not things that we sit and spin about. Do you always plan the things that you're going to watch on TV that night? Or do you just pick up the remote and do it? That we have to learn how to separate what we're feeling, which is always don't do the thing, or let's just wait, or maybe it's going to fail, and just start doing, doing those things, treating the things that are important in our lives like we treat turning on the TV or getting dinner. We have to take that action. She says, That when you feel too tired, you don't feel like it, you think you're not worthy of the thing, you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to untangle it, you're worried about it, you're frustrated about it, you have certain procrastinations of it, that's when we need to act. That's when we need her five-second rule. And she said that all of this will turn the should-haves, the could-haves, the would-haves into done. Did. All those things are now in the past because you acted. Get rid of what she says, I'm tired, it's too cold, it's too hot, it's raining, it's too late, let's go. There's a commercial, I'll try to find the link and put it in my show notes, which just cracked me up, where you had this person and she was on the running track and she's all in her gear and she's ready to go and run. And all of a sudden, this single drop of rain falls all the way from the sky and lands on her shoulder. And then she looked at it and she walked off the running track. A single drop of rain stopped her from going instead of just doing it. That cracks me up because I have to say a lot of times that's me too. Oh, I was going to go for a bike ride, but look at that cloud. It may rain, may not rain, but I've already sunk everything I feel like doing. And I think as someone who has had productivity problems in the past, just gutting it out and just doing those things is how I got to almost everywhere. I was talking to my friend, and she says that I'm the most productive person that she's met. And then I told that to another friend, which was me laughing about it, because I'm not a very productive person. 
because I have all these things in my brain that say, just go play a video game. Let's go read a book. Let's take a nap. Let's do all these other things. That was me 10 years ago that I would never do any of the things that I wanted to do. But somehow through, I think, brute force of getting myself to act, I did start acting. And maybe it is true that I'm very productive now because I got here by just acting. And if someone tells me, Jill, you're really productive, I don't believe it because that didn't seem like me. But now in reflection and after hearing it from two friends, it is me. And I am that person who acts. And that's a new Jill. And it could be a new you too. So my challenge to you is pick one thing this week and instead of thinking about it, instead of overthinking about it, it has to be something that you know you want to do, that you've been putting off doing. Just do it. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And see how that works for you. And now our fun entertainment advice of the week comes from the Blues Brothers. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. That's right. Sometimes you just have to go. And the Blues Brothers, they understand that. They know what it means to just go. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you leave a review or drop me an email at jillatsmallstepspod.com and tell me what things you procrastinate on and what you tried to do in order to make it happen now. <laughs>